Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited to let you know that Cloudflare Containers is now available and you can go try this out right now. It's really awesome because Containers is going to supercharge the kinds of applications you can get built on Workers. And in fact, I'm going to show you one crazy beta application I got running on Containers. So I'm here on my browser and I'm going to go to webtop.conflare.workers.dev and this is a like, VNC over the browser kind of setup. But what we're seeing here is a full Linux desktop environment with a GUI running inside of Cloudflare containers. And I mean a full Linux desktop environment. So let's go open up a terminal and I can say, uh, let's cut ETC issue. And you can see we're running Debian 11. This is the XFC desktop. You can tell by the logo and we can actually run desktop application. So I can go install GIMP or something, or let's uh, do um, web browsing. I'm just going to open up Firefox. Where's the web browser? Okay, applications, web browser. So let's open up Firefox and browse the internet. I can go to YouTube and we can go watch a video on YouTube, which is crazy. We're watching a video on YouTube inside of a container that is streamed over the internet. That's that's amazing. Uh, Cloudflare. So Cloudflare developers. Yeah, that's the YouTube channel. And this is awesome. And here's Craig's video playing inside of a container, which is really cool. Okay, so let's uh, let's zoom out a bit, and uh, yeah, it's it's awesome. Like this is really awesome. There's a lot you can get done uh, using containers, and this is just one of the examples of the really powerful things you can do in containers. If you like to play around with this, the link is going to be up for a while, and I'll also be leaving a link to the source code on GitHub so you can take all of it and deploy it into your own Cloudflare account to run uh, as a private container instance for your web needs. And uh, yeah, that. That's, that's a brief nutshell of what containers are. It's going to open up a wide range of use cases. If you need heavy compute, if you want custom environments, if you want to run a different language like Go or Rust or Ruby on Rails, uh, containers is going to be a great use case for it. Or if you want to run things like legacy binaries, or if you need an application that requires a full file system that you could not run on workers, you can do all of that stuff inside of containers today. So this is really awesome. And I see it's changing the kind of applications that's possible within workers. So what I'm going to do in this video is give you a brief rundown of what containers are and how you can get started with them. Uh, we'll take a look at what you need to get started with containers and we'll also deploy your first container and then i'll show you some of the tools on the dashboard to help you get the most use of your experience uh, building with containers my name is confidence and i am a developer advocate at cloudflare without any delay let's get started I'd like to start by talking about what you need to get access to containers. And this is going to be really simple. All of the tools are going to be free of charge, so you don't have to worry about getting your credit card. The first is a Cloudflare account. So you need to sign up for Cloudflare by going to dash.cloudflare.com. It's free to sign up. You don't need a credit card to get started. And uh, once you're done, you'll be taken to this dashboard where you can have access to containers. And that's going to be on the compute and workers and here's the option for containers. I have two containers running in my account and you can see this containers here on the dashboard. The next thing you also need is Node.js installed and you can check if you have Node.js installed by running node-v. If you don't have Node.js installed, I'll be leaving a link to help you get Node.js installed for your particular operating system. So please check the link in the description. And lastly, you need to have Docker installed. That is because containers will be built locally using Docker and pushed to uh, the Cloudflare image registry for it to get deployed. You need to have Docker installed. And again, you can check for Docker that you have Docker installed by running Docker version. And if you don't have it installed, I'm also going to be leaving a link to get Docker installed for your particular operating system. So these are the three things you need. A Cloudflare account, you need to have Node.js installed, then you need to have Docker installed, and that's pretty much it. So let's move on to deploying your first container to your Cloudflare account. Uh, to get this done, I prepared a GitHub repository 
to help us with that. I'll be leaving this linked in the description below. And when you find it, don't forget to smash the follow button on my GitHub account. And let's go to repositories. So it's going to be the Wifsky uh, GitHub repository. And this is a project that can help you convert videos to GIF in, in the browser. This is, of course, going to be running inside of a Cloudflare worker and a Cloudflare container. We'll take a look at how it's all set up, but this is going to be the link. It's going to be linked below. And what you want to do over here is you want to go ahead to clone this repository. So I am going to go to the HTTPS link. So let's copy this and I am going to switch back into my terminal and we can clone the repository by uh, using the git clone command. So this is going to be git clone the account with the repository. So we can see it into the folder that we have cloned and I'm just going to install the dependencies. Why do the dependencies have been installed? Let's switch back. Oh, that was really fast. Anyway, let's switch back into the, uh, the GitHub repository and I can show you what we have here. So we have the actual container in a folder called Wifsky container. And if we go open that up, you notice this is a Rust container. So it's a project written in Rust. It's really awesome. And because we're converting videos, to GIF, we're using FFmpeg, which you could not run inside of a Cloudflare worker, but hey, now we have containers and we can do whatever we want. So we're going to be running FFmpeg inside of a container and we have a Rust server that will receive the video files, uh, do the conversion using FFmpeg and return the result, the results GIF back to the client, which is like literally everything that is here. So this is a Rust server. If you take a look at the main areas, it is using FFmpeg. I can do a quick find here. Let's look for FFmpeg. So it's using FFmpeg binary, which is installed inside of the container to do the conversion. And uh, yeah, it's, it's running a Rust server. And what's really cool is that we have a multi-threaded Rust server. So we're running multiple threads inside of the container which is really awesome. And you get all of these awesome, powerful use cases when you're running Cloudflare containers. All right, so that's for the container bit. Now, if we go take a look at the actual worker, I think we're done installing our dependencies. So I can go open this up in the browser. Uh, if we take a look at the actual worker, that's going to be the index.ts file. This is where the whole container workload is. And we'll take a closer look at this, but let's first get this deployed to our account. So what I'll do is I'll close up the editor and let's run the commands to get it deployed. And this is going to be npm run deploy. And I think I need to have my VPN turned off because that causes some SSL issues within the container when it's trying to install its dependencies. So if you have uh, a VPN turned on, you might want to turn that off so you don't have issues while trying to build the Docker container. So this is going to build the container, as you can see. And it's installing the Rust dependencies with Cargo. And now it's deploying the container to my Cloudflare account. And the deploy is done. So now that this is done, I have it available on wifsky.conflare.workers.dev. I can go open this up in my browser. And uh, this is the project that we have deployed. I promise you it's super cool. And if you have used Jifsky on Windows or Mac OS, this does the exact same thing. You give it a video, you can trim the video, you can give it some parameters to customize how you want the GIF to look like when it's done converting. And then it takes that video, applies all of the uh, filters you have given it and produces a GIF. So let's uh, give this a try. I am going to select a file. I saw this really awesome video on YouTube. So let's use this one. It is about cats and I think cats are really cool, but containers are cooler than cats or are cats cooler than containers. I don't know. Okay. So I think I'm going to trim this video a bit. Uh, I'm going to trim from second 11 to the end, which is second 14. And I think all of these parameters are fine. So I'm just going to hit the create GIF button. And what is going to happen is that this video is going to be uploaded to my worker. My worker is going to forward that upload to the container. The container running the web, web a Rust server in web is going to receive the file and send it off to FFmpeg to get that video 
convert it to GIF with all of these parameters that we have on the UI, which we can totally edit. And it's also going to apply the trimming we have done here as well. And once that process is done of it getting the video converted to GIF, it sends the response, which is a GIF, back to the worker and the worker takes the response forwards it back to the client, which is the browser. And we get the GIF, the converted GIF here, which is really awesome. So you can see that this is, this has created a GIF with the timestamp we selected, which is awesome. And we can go download this and share this on social media, which is really lovely. So yeah, this is the, this is the Wifsky app. You can go deploy this to your accounts just like we did. And uh, now let's take a look at the code so I can show you exactly how this works and how containers work in a nutshell. Okay. So heading back to my IDE. I'm just going to clear the screen and open this up in the browser. Now let's actually look at the code so you see exactly how it works. Um, the first thing here is that I have my wrangler.json file which defines what my container is. So you can see we have a new entry for the container configuration and this is everything that my container is about. So the name, the image, which is the Docker file and the hardware config, which is what we have in the configuration key. The Docker file, we can go take a look at that. The Docker file is a Docker file and this specifies how the container is built with all of the dependencies. Remember it's a Rust project. So we have the Rust things here and it needs to get built. And here we're installing FFmpeg. And lastly, we know the Rust server is going to be running on port 8080. So we want to expose that. And we also want to set an entry point command for the container. So that's the Docker file. Now, when the container gets deployed, this Docker file gets built and you saw that earlier, but what happens when a request comes in? So let's close this up. And this is the actual uh, meat of the application, the worker where everything happens. So what happens is we receive a request and I should just also mention that this app specifically has a front end that's in the public directory. It's just a HTML file, which is the UI you see here. It's just a form um, in a nutshell. The form submits the GIF or the video to the worker and uh, that's all you have in the HTML file. So it's not really interesting. So let's go back to the index, index.ts. So when the video is uploaded, what happens? Um, this is received by a worker, the fetch handler in the worker and the worker calls the container. So we have this set up such that we have we could have up to three container instances and you can see some of that in the, you can see some of that in the wrangler.json file. We can have a max of three instances of this container. So we are load balancing between the three instances because this application is completely stateless. And then when we grab an instance that's available, we can go ahead to send the request, which is the video file to that container and the container receives the request. It's a Rust server and we can take a look at that. So that's going to be in the main.rs and this receives, it has two routes. This receives the video in the convert route, does the conversion and returns the response back to the worker, which is then again, returned back to the client. And uh, something you also notice here is that we have a container class on line 11. So we have a container class, which is a durable object to be more specific, but this makes the interface nicer and easier to work with. So we need to tell it what port the container is running. In this case, it's going to be running on port 8080. That ensures that we can forward requests from our worker to the durable object, object to the container on the port spe specified here. And then we have a sleep after that, how long we want the container to be alive. After it receives a request, this container is going to be automatically uh, shut down after five minutes. And we can do a lot more things here. We can also set up environment variables. I think this is going to be env virus. Environment variables that are passed to the container when it boots up. 
and so much more. You can see we have a couple other methods here like the on start, on stop, on error. You can override these methods in case you want to manually configure your container. What happens when it starts? What happens when it stops? What happens when there's an error? Or what happens when there's a connection? You can override all of this. The only thing I'm doing here is just logging that, hey, the container has started. And yeah, that's it in a nutshell. So the worker receives the request. Uh, forwards it to the durable object. The durable object uh, sends that to the container. It gets processed. It gets returned back to the worker and the work worker returns the response back to the client. And this means that because it's just a worker and in fact, this is just a durable object, you can do a lot of interesting things here. So you can hook this up to a KV store. You can hook it up to a database, a D1 database. You can hook this up to R2. You can hook this up to Workers AI and all of the other developer platform tools that you love. And that's all possible because it's a worker. So this is the uh, container workflow in a nutshell. Now I'm going to show you what the dashboard looks like and the tools you have on the dashboard. All right, so let's switch to the dashboard. I'm going to go to the, to the browser and I have my dashboard view opened here and we just deployed the Wifsky container. So we can go take a look at this. And of course the dashboard view is going to give you metrics and stats about your container. So you are able to see everything going on and how much resources you are consuming. And yeah, you can see all of that in the dashboard. So I have uh, four gigabytes of disk, disk space. I have two gigabytes of RAM. I have two, two CPU cores. I can see all of the instances I have for this container. Remember, we specified a max of three. We can see all three instances. They are all inactive because we don't have a request coming in. And when a request does come in, uh, we will have them active. So I, I don't have a request coming in. So I, I think I just need to go select a file and we can do that and hit create a GIF and that should uh, spin up one of these instances and it's going to be ready to um, take that GIF and convert it to a video. Uh, the instance they should have changed, but okay, so we can see that we have the instance actually running now. And you have a tag tab for logs. This is really helpful because this is where you can see all of the logs of your container. So anything that is sent to standard output is going to be logged here. And you can see for my actual application, I'm logging the state of the Rust server that's running inside of the container. When it receives a GIF, when it is clearing up the files, when it's doing the conversion and everything that needs to happen for it to uh, get the video converted to the GIF is logged. And you can also see the timestamps for each of the log that is uh, shown here. So that makes it really helpful to debug what's going on and you have that uh, insight into the container. Now we can go take a look at a specific container instance. This is the container that is running and you have all of those details for the container that is running as well. All of this is real time information and it's really awesome. It's going to help you get the most of using your container. Now, if you head back to the main container view for this specific container, you can also see linked resources such as the Cloudflare worker that receives the request and forwards it to the container. We can go take a look at this. So this is the Cloudflare worker. It is the Wifsky Cloudflare worker. And of course, this is a worker, so you have everything you need to uh, get visibility into that. And you also have the durable object, uh, which is the durable object icon you saw over there. And you can see the metrics and stats for this durable object. So you get a lot of tools to help you uh, see what's going on inside of a container. And I think this is, this is really awesome. And uh, this is going to help you as you build powerful applications using containers. Awesome. And that's really it about containers. There's so much more to talk about, such as uh, routing patterns, um, integrating other parts of the developer platform into containers like KV, R2, Workers AI, and, and more. Um, I'm going to be leaving links to the documentation of containers and the repositories we have seen today, WebTop and also Wifsky. So you can go play around and get this deployed to your account. And I'd love to see what you plan to build using containers. Please leave a comment in the chat. And uh, yeah, I'd love to take a look at what you're building. There's a lot more coming up on the roadmap for containers, auto scaling, uh, logging, co-location, and so much 
more uh, features are coming out so keep your eyes peeled on the containers dashboard for those features as they are available and we'll make more videos to help you get the most of these features when they land thank you for watching this video don't forget to get subscribed and i'll see you in the next one take care bye